The Lathrop Malamutes and the Colony Knights meet in Palmer as the last undefeated teams in a three-day MAC NLC challenge in the Matanuska Valley. The Knights started the challenge with a stunning 10 of 12, 25 point shooting performance in the first quarter against West Valley. But a quick miss leads to quick points for the Malamutes. Curtis White Jr. the assist, Tariki Jenis the points. Bailey West skips, Damian Fult flips, both teams on the board. Tarike Jenis feeds Terrell Ford on the block extended. Terrell flashes a little of the toolkit that makes him one of the best back to the basket scorers in the state. An unforced error on the night's end and a quick release leads to yet another Tariki Jenis breakaway bucket. Kyle Carlson the assist. Instant replay of sorts, turnover, assist, bucket. Quick six for Tyreke, Gabriel Howard the steal and assist. And in the half court, two quick passes, tough catch, clean stroke. Kyle Carlson for two. Anton Chambly and Antonio Bush play catch. Anton splits the top of the zone and knocks the runner. And D-side, Antonio climbs the ladder for the kill. But the Malamutes still have the ball and a six point lead after one. But Antonio delivers on the offensive end as well with a quick fake and some slippery footwork. Cole Burner knocked down five mid range deuces on his way to 14 points in Lathrop's win over Wasilla, but apparently he's got in the gym range. And on the defensive end, Cole breaks up the pass to the cutter and a little pinball leads to points. Curtis White Jr., another assist. Tyreke Jenis, eight points at the wrap. Kyle Carlson, click, boom. The Malamutes put up eight points in 45 seconds and go up 12 on the Knights with five to play in the second. Lathrop giving the Valley a glimpse of what makes them the top ranked team in the state. But Bailey West steadies the horse by reading the passing lane, flashing some handles and the clean stroke. But Kyle Carlson answers the 17 footer with the 18 footer. And Cole Burner returns to the launch pad. His second next level three completes a two and a half minute 14 3 run from the Malamutes. Colony getting a little taste of the medicine that they forced on the Wolfpack. One final first half turnover. Gabriel Howard and Lathrop take a 13 point lead into the break. Second half, Kyle Carlson sneaks behind turn heads, takes the Terrell Ford feed to a bunny. Kyle Carlson stretches the D with the reverse dribble, challenges, kicks, Cole Burner three-peats, Cole scores nine, all from behind the arc. Knights on the wrong end of a 23-7 run, Damian Folk provides a temporary reprieve with the corner three. But Damian misses on his next effort, and Tyreke Jenis pushes the pace. Straight to the rack. Deja two. The Knights miss another three ball and Tarike Jenis gets out in front and collects a cookie at the other end. Fairbanks game speed has them at the top of the charts at both the 3A and 4A levels. Time running out on the Knights, Damian Folk delivers the dime and Antonio Bush stays active to finish, eight on the day for Antonio. And Damian steps to the arc, gets the shooter's bounce, Damian's 15 led all Knights, but they're still down 16. Once again, Kyle Carlson stretches the man with the reverse dribble, attacks a seam, and finishes at the 10. But wave it off. Robert Sonnenberg draws the misnamed player control foul. Up 16 with 8 to play, the Mutes start stretching the floor and burning clock. Curtis White Jr. takes advantage of spacing and Kyle Carlson's cap to drop the easy. Damian stretching the floor as well. Three more from Seawolf range. And Bailey West gets another pick. She takes it straight to the house for two of his eight. Folk drives the lane. Doesn't get the bounce, but Antonio Bush is there for the putback. All of a sudden, it's a 12-point game. But the Knights have to take big chances. Cole Burner and Terrell Ford make them pay. The and one makes it a 15-point game with 2.42 to play. And that was the dagger. And that's the exclamation point. Kyle Carlson and Tariki Jenis drop 16 apiece and Cole Burner 9. The WPI number one Lathrop Malamutes take care of business and protect their slim mathematical lead by sweeping in the Matanuska Valley. But that margin would grow later Saturday night when the Diamond Lynx delivered a stunning upset over the WPI number two West Eagles. 
Add to that, Bartlett's loss to East, a team Lathrop beat in January, and Lathrop's strong body of work has likely already qualified them for state. However, Lathrop has two regular season games against West Valley in the MAC and the MAC tourney left to play. Barring a highly unlikely Lathrop loss to North Pole, the Wolfpack is the only team left in Alaska that can keep the Malamutes from heading to state as the number one seed. West beat Lathrop in a foundation game early this year and in last year's state quarterfinals, but they won't likely meet again this year unless they're still playing on March 22nd.